Welcome to Eastgate Church. I trust you'll find this message inspiring and encouraging for you today. So let's get back to Gideon, hopefully. I'll never get through the whole story of Gideon, but probably this will just be, just it's going to just be um, the, the third part of the last three weeks we've been on. I believe it's a timely word, and we'll just pray that the Lord will honor that and God will speak to you this morning. Father, we just thank you for your word this day. We pray, Father, Lord, let it not just bounce in one ear and run out the next. Father, let it not just, Father, penetrate the, the head and not touch the heart. I pray, Lord, your word is living and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. Judging the thoughts and attitudes of the heart, Father, bone marrow, Lord God. Father, Lord God, digging deep right into our very core. Let that word penetrate us, Lord, this day, I pray, in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Just read a couple of verses. Then we maybe recap quickly, and then we'll pick ourselves up to speed. And it's in chapter 7, Judges, and we'll read 1 through 8. And it says, Then Gideon and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Harod. So the camp of the Midianites was on the north side to them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Least Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that, the, that of whom I say to you, This one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whom I say to you, This one shall not go with you, the same shall not go with you. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps with, from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the 300 men who have lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. So the people took provisions and their trumpets in their hands, and he sent them away, all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, and they retained those 300 men. Now the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So just a little recap. Obviously, Israel has been turned over to the Midianites and to the foreign powers, and they've been ravaged for seven years. For seven years, every time they wanted to try and plant their food and get on and accumulate things, the enemy would come in and just rob them from it and take everything from them so that they were always left penniless and vulnerable. And this happened year after year after year because God had turned them over to their enemy because of their sinfulness, because of their wickedness. They were worshiping Baal. They were sacrificing probably their children. Not all of them, but some of them were sacrificing their children to foreign gods. They were caught up in great sexual filth and immorality. They mixed with the people who, that they should never have mixed with. And so there was great wickedness. Probably a little bit like today. Amen? Just like a little bit today. Abortion, widespread. Sexual immorality everywhere. Even in the church. Even in the church, a lot of people dress up, oh, we love one another, as if that makes it right. So what we see in the world, you've got very much in the church as well. So there's nothing new under the sun. So we can see here again, the enemy has been all over the place. Darkness, I love that song, just one touch from the king changes everything. Hallelujah. I just seem to look at just seem to look at you, look at you there as well, and King, because her second name is King, and um, and the, and the Lord Jesus Christ is King over this woman's life. Amen. And we thank God for you, Anne. Just thought I'd tell you that this morning. Amen. Glory to God. So we can see here now that God now puts his hand upon this man Gideon. Um, Gideon is going to get raised up. Gideon obviously does not see himself as a great man, but God sees him as a great man. And I'm sure all of us could probably say the same, although I'm sure there's a few people in the church just now think, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. And maybe some of you who think you're doing a bit of, kind of weightlifting and all the rest of you, you think you're a bit of a tough man. I'm the man. 
my friends, you're nothing. Do you know what I mean? You're just flesh and blood and bones. And the Lord could just go like that and take you out in a moment. I don't care how big your muscles are. I don't care how strong you are. And the world's strongest man. The Lord could just take you out there like that. That's what you are as far as God is concerned. But we like to think we are something when we're nothing. But you have to get to the place when you become nothing and then God can make you something. There's a wee gem there for somebody there this morning. Hallelujah. God says, I honor those who honor me. Those who humble themselves under my mighty hand, God says, I will raise you up. The biggest problem is humbling yourself in the first place. Amen. So that God can lift you up. Let's get to the story. So, so God then calls um, Gideon. Gideon destroys altars of Baal. He's now he sets a fleece before the Lord and he now he's assured of now. He blows the trumpet and 32,000 men. It was probably just four tribes that he reached out to, but 32,000 men. And now they're at the battlefield. We just read there at seven. He's now in one side. There's a valley before them. And now the enemy, which calls them, they're like locusts. So I don't know what it was. 5 to 1, whatever, 61, but there was a lot more of them than there was us. But there were still 32,000. And now Gideon there is standing there in the camp and the valley is between them. You know, those valley experiences. It's always, do you remember another great valley, the valley of Ella, when David and Goliath fed the Goliath? Remember the Philistines were on one side and the Israelites were on another side and there was a big guy called Goliath. Now you might think you're big and tough, but I'll tell you this, if we, either we, if we brought Goliath into this room, you would feel like a wee pipsqueak. Apparently he was nine feet tall, he was built like a tank, and then you probably even struggled to pick up his javelin. And, um, and, and, and everybody was in fear and trembling, but there was a man that God was raising up, David, a young man who took him on, hallelujah. But there, that was that valley again, wasn't it? And the enemy, we were looking across the other side, there's two armies and looking across the valley, and you know there's going to be a battle. Just like our brave art film, wasn't it? You know, the Scots and the English. Sorry for my English brethren, you know, but actually, us Scots have to realize English can back up and din us in. That's, that's, that's the nuts and the pokes. We had a victory, but eventually, you know, there was, there was, always, there was always battles, wasn't there? So, so let's not get too cocky about ourselves. But we see that valley and the two, the two camped on one side and on the other side. Hallelujah. And then the Lord, now Gideon must have been saying, okay, well, I've made me a chance. I've got 32,000 warriors. He's, he's, oh, well, you know. And the Lord says, there's too many. <laughs> what do you mean there's too many? There's not enough. I've only got 32,000. You know, we're outnumbered. Who knows by how many? And God says, there's too many, he says. Because if, I'll, if you fight this war, you will take the glory for yourself and says, we did this by our own hand. So you know, God will never share his glory with anybody. God will never share his glory with anybody, with any man. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. And God will not let man take glory in himself. The biggest problem is with a lot of people, we like a wee bit of the glory. And that's the biggest problem with a lot of the church today. We glorify ourselves. Look at us. Mega churches. Mega money. Mega lifestyle. As if that's something to be proud of. My friend, that is not something to be proud of. And you've heard me say it time and time again. Hallelujah. That's not us. That's like us trying to showcase the world. Hey, we can do as good as you can do. You're missing the boat, my friends, because God works totally different from the ways of man. Hallelujah. If Jesus Christ wanted to come and impress the world, do you think he couldn't have come and impressed the world? But he came meek and humble. There was nothing about him in his appearance that anybody would even look at him. And he came and he, and he came and he was born into a poor family when he could have came and he could have been born in a palace. The king of kings. Man, if he wanted to dazzle us, he could have dazzled us. But he chose not to. He came a different way. And this is the way the church has to find itself again. Certainly it's the way I'm finding myself at this moment in time. So here we are. So now it says, the Lord says there's too many. So, so he says, they're right, okay. And God says, tell them, those who are afraid, tell them that they can go home. Amen. Tell them. But just let me share one verse. I've just missed out a verse to say, but God will not share his glory with anyone. Psalm 42 and 8 says this, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. I am the Lord. I will not show my glory, my glory with, with anyone. Hallelujah. Neither to these false gods or these false images. You know, then he says, tell the people, whoever scared, and you get 32 mancho mens, we're all, we're all decked out. Whoever's are scared, just go home right now. If you're afraid, go home right now. Now, could you imagine the scene, guys? There's 32,000 men, right? We're all bravado, but deep down, we're all shaking in our boots. 
Listen, Michael's an ex-army man there as well, and I'm sure Michael could tell us four stories as well. You might be when you're going into a war situation, you think you're not the, you think you're not fearful, you think you're not terrified. Could you imagine the First World War and the Second World War, and you're waiting for the command over the top, lads, and you've just seen everybody getting shot down? Do you think you're full of bravery? And somebody says, "Right, lads, over the top." You think you wouldn't? Somebody says, "Hey, guys, anybody want to go back to Britain? Just go now." I don't think there'd be many people left in the trenches. I think they would have been all back in the boats. So, 22,000 people will do a runner. 22,000 say, right, that's it, tools that we're off. And it leaves 10,000. 22,000. Do you know, fear is a terrible thing. Fear is a terrible thing. See, fear gets into you, I've got to tell you, and we all struggle with it, but fear is a terrible thing. It will make you run, it will make you turn back, it will make you say, can I do this anymore? I'm, you know, and you'll make excuses why, why, I, I, well, I need to go back anyway. And, my, my, my wife, my child, whatever, and there'll be some, some situation you will justify to yourself there as well. So there's a, a verse in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 20, verse 8, it says this, and the officers shall speak again, speaking to the Israelites, and whenever they were going to get into the battle, it says this, and the officers shall speak further to the people and say to them, is there any man who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go back to his house, lest the heart of his brethren faint like his heart. Amen. Do you know, fear is something. See, if you're standing next to some guy and we're getting into the bathroom, it's like, oh, 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 oh. that fear can get you. And then before you know it, that's, do you want to go back? Right, okay, then. And then before you know it, that could demoralize the troops. So what are you saying is, right, if you're fearful, turn back. Because we let that fear get a grip of us. In fact, I'll give you a wee snippet from last uh, uh, tonight, isn't it? Remember the 12 spies went in to spy out the land? And 10 of them come back and they were terrified. You know, I, I, it's a good land, but, but, but the, the, do you see the size of them? <gasps> 10 of them infected all the people. All the people now were infected by that 10. There was two that stood up. Said, come on, guys, we can do it. Come on. And that's the men you want next to you. You want, you want a Caleb and a Joshua on either side of you. Come on, let's go, guys. Because when you hang around with good people, my friends, I want to tell you this, it will rub off on you. You run about with the wrong kind of people, that will rub off you in as well. And I can all tell the story of that. Birds of a feather flock together. Now he's reduced to what? To 10 men. As I says, guys, fear is such a powerful force. And we all suffer from it. All of us to one capacity and another. I've got in here, fear is powerful. The enemy uses it against us to intimidate us. And to dominate us, keeping us subject to him. And that's what fear does. Because we're never going to stand up to the fight. We're always going to find an excuse to back off and to back out. 22,000 leave the field and we're now left with 10,000. And then the Lord comes to Gideon. Gideon goes, 10,000? Well, at least I've got 10,000. And then the Lord goes, there's still too many. <laughs> there's still too many, Gideon. He says, bring them down to the water. He says, and I will sift them there. I will sift them, and, um, and I will show you. I will tell you the ones that's actually going with you. So now Gideon, in obedience to the Lord, he comes down to the water, and we know that the Lord is watching them. You know, the Lord himself is watching them, how they drink the water. And there's a way to drink water in those days, when they says they lapped the water, there'd be people there, they would always have their eyes about them like this, and they'd pick the water up to their mouth. So they were always going to be alert. And there's others who are desperately thirsty. They just go out and fling their faces in the water. So they're not actually alert. They're actually in a place of vulnerability. And the Lord is watching all those. And he says, right, if I say that man can come, that man can come. If I say that man can't come, he's not coming. And God hand picked him, right, him, 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 him. And amongst 10,000. Do you know the Lord watches all of us all at once? And God is constantly watching us and observing us, our behavior, do we fit the criteria? Do we not fit the criteria? Him, him, him. Hallelujah. It says many are called. Do you know that scripture? Many are called, but few are chosen. That's quite a sobering scripture, guys. Many are called, but few are chosen. And we can see that. And then to the point was, he is now, that's 9,700 people who did not fit the bill. And Gideon had to turn around and say, right, guys, you can all go home. Could you imagine how humiliating that would be, men? There's a battle to be won. The battle's over there. The 10,000 are standing and then Gideon had to say to 9,700, okay, guys, you dismissed. Dismissed. What's the word they use today? Oh, Stuart, I'll know this word. You're cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was in a job situation, by the way. A job situation. 
And Stuart says, is that right? Oh, well, we're up for a fight. And hey, and I maybe let Stuart share that at some future time. But, um, but he says, is that right? Is that what you think? But that's the word they use you now. You're cancelled. You see, we're living in a world today that fear, do you know fear, they use fear against us today? Our government is using fear against us. See, this woke agenda, I think he's aware of woke agenda and it's, and it, and it's there every, every, all, all the time in the classrooms, in the schools, in business and one thing or another. You're not allowed to say anything against the LGBT crew. And, and we're, all we're teaching, we've got to be, and see if you're in that environment, you better keep your mouth shut or else you know what? Because now it says, uh-huh. You're going to lose your job. You better, sit. you better not say nothing against what we are doing or else you're going to lose your job. How are you going to pay your mortgage? How are you going to feed your kids? How are you going to, how are you going to, do you see how it works? Do you know what's happening today in our nation? Do you know what's happening? Fear, the government's using that against us. You say anything against that, you'll be in trouble. We're going to put you in jail. You're going to be cancelled. You're going to be this, this and that. There'll be no promotion for you. This is what's happening today. There's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. This is how Satan works. This is what's happening today, and yet we're all fast asleep, but he puts pressure on you. Just sit back. Don't rock the boat. Oh, well, I'm just, I know people, I talk to people all the time. They don't want to say nothing. Don't say nothing about abortion. Oh, don't say nothing about abortion. Just keep your mouth shut. Don't, don't stand up. Don't say it. Don't, don't, you know. That's how the enemy works. So now we are being forced to be silent while he shouts and screams and while he demands and he, he controls the field. But God is looking for warriors to be raised up. Hallelujah. And here's Gideon. Now he's reduced to 300. Guys, I like to get inside the story. Because sometimes we just read the headline news. Put yourself in that 10,000. And you've just been dismissed. And do you know who dismissed them? The Lord himself. The Lord says, no, you're not coming. Although they maybe have blamed Gideon. Who does that Gideon think he is? Eh? Oh, aye. Aye. But it was the Lord. It was the Lord and here we find themselves, that they were sifted at the water. And I think some people still sometimes remember that I preached a sermon when, when the, uh, it was Jacob's sheep, wasn't it? And God was going to separate sheep from sheep. We all know the story of God separating the sheep from goats. The goats being the people of the world, of course, and we're the sheep. But there's another place in Scripture that God says when Jacob then, Jacob's sheep, Jacob says that the speckled and the spotted ones, that will be yours. And I brought out a sermon there where God is busy actually in this church separating sheep from sheep. That's not going to be we are not getting to the kingdom of God, but God's busy separating. Right now, right now, I believe this famine period of time, this is why I'm preaching on Gideon because I feel as if it was a living word and a timely word and a word for this moment in time. This is what we're seeing here just now. It's as if there's a famine across the church, but you might think that, but God is busy working. It's only in a famine situation it sets out the men from the boys. God's saying, okay, how are they, what are they doing? How are they reacting? What are they doing? And he's observing and he's, he's, he's gathering an elite group for these last days. I believe that 100%. God is gathering an elite group of men and women that he's going to use in these latter days. Hallelujah. It's called the remnant. The remnant. God is working in his remnant and he's putting a remnant together. That's why when people ask me when I stepped outside the Assemblies of God, which I never regret, 2015, I was a Assemblies of God man. I was trained up in the Assemblies of God, served under Alec Gillis latterly, trained up in Ben Patu. Can I also say this? Ben Patu phoned us up again last night and says, Arthur, what a fantastic church. What a wonderful service last week, he says. I was utterly blessed. He says, tell your people thank you very much. He says, the welcome that he received was awesome. And he was just so delighted. That was the second time that he's actually phoned up and they said that to us. So just to let you know, somebody did enjoy the meeting last week, just in case you think. Yeah, Jim that brought them, um, Jim was a taxi driver, he is a taxi driver actually, but, but um, Jim went all the way down there, brought them up and stayed a couple of days, and I don't think Jim's been doing church regularly, and, um, and he said as well, that was the most friendliest church I've been in in a long time, so I just want to say that, nothing to do with me, all to do with yourselves as well, so guys, I, th- I thought I'd just add that there as well, so thank you Linda for reminding that. So praise God, now, now we're left with the, the 300 and God's going to use them. We'll stop there. I'm just going to want you to finish with this. Let me finish by saying this now to us as a congregation. It would be very easy for me to suggest that those who have left us uh, were taken away by the Lord, or shall I say, sent away. And we have seen a few people left us of late. 
That just seems to be the course, isn't it? You know, people come, as somebody says, people come and people go. And over our 20, we were 25 years old as a church in 2000, in January the 30th, 2025, is when this church was established. And sometimes it goes. And I want to tell you this, you know, sometimes does it knock you? It can knock you. And you can just look at yourself and think, do you know something? You know, as somebody says to me, well, have you asked them why they're leaving? Do you know something? It would be very easy for me to say, well, you know, that's the, they've chosen to, or that, that was their decision. But do you know what it makes me want to do? It makes me to get right before the Lord again, because, you know, I, I don't just say, well, God's taken them away, and you want you always to justify yourself. No, I think it's good sometimes to have a good look at yourself, to see, to realize, Lord, if I get the calling of God upon my life, if I'm not, did I have it once, but it's not there anymore? Do you know something? I know the call of God in my life. I don't need to stand up and, and scream and bawl and all the rest of it. I know it, but you don't know it. I know it. I know it personally because I know God has de- did a lot of dealings with me. And some people just don't get that. Hallelujah. Some people just don't get that. Everybody's caught up in their own little world. I would say this often. I'm a dessert for some of you. Or I'm a starter. You've all got your main course, the big name person that you want to follow, that you're listening to. Because see, in YouTube, people are listening and influenced with all different things. I know God has placed something within me. And I want to tell you this, church, I'm going back to that place again. Hallelujah. I'm going back to that place where I need to go and take hold of that to which the Lord took hold of me. I know God has placed something within me. And I just want to say, I'm not here to upset anybody. But if, I've got, if I wanted to say, call something out, I've got every right to do that. And if you could d- disagree with it, or you're not wanting to agree with it, I've got something to say about it, or not something to say about it. I just want to be true to me before God, because you know something? I'm, I, I'm, going, to be, I'm going to have to stand before God and give an account of God. What is God saying in this man called Arthur O'Malley, which happens to be the pastor of this church, whether you like that or whether you don't like that, the reality is, it is, it is what it is. Can I say this as well? I never invited anybody to this church. I never invited people. You feel that you were called to come in. You just came in through my door. I didn't come through your door. You just came in through this door. And then all of a sudden, I could be now intimidated that I can't speak about this or speak about that. I'm going to upset somebody. I'm going to upset somebody else. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say the next thing. See, from now on, I'm going to, I just want to encourage you. I want your prayers for this. I need to get back to that place where I'm going to just now block myself away. And I need to know, Lord, what are you saying? Because, you know, there's many, many voices in this world. And I'm talking about in church world. There's, guys, you just go around a lot of different churches. The guys for the haven. You go to this church, you go to that church, you go to this one, you get this one, and you'll get a different flavor of what's happening here, what's happening here, and what's happening there. And glory to God. That's, that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. You can go and you can get a little kind of flavor. Can I say this? You need to find what the Lord is saying by his Holy Spirit. You need to find the voice of the Lord. It's a still small voice because there's a lot of voices speaking out today. A lot of voices declaring this. And most of them will say, I'm the man or I'm the woman. I am. I am. Because God's called me. And that might be true what they are saying, what they feel. But the reality is, is it God's? Is it God's reality? Hallelujah. God set apart a man called Gideon. Gideon was a man chosen by God for a work that God was going to do through him. We could look at other men. We could look at them all through Scripture. We could get into the New Testament. God picks people out for his glory. Hallelujah. And he will use those who he is going to use. Glory to God. Can I tell you this? If somebody's puffing themselves up and wants to declare himself to be something that he's not and he's nothing, it is not the way of the Lord. God will use those who are broken. I've said this and it came through in a couple of weeks. See, if you want God to use you, here's a wee gem. Then God's going to smash you to pieces and God's going to break you. Break you. Break you to the point when you now feel as if I'm just nothing. And God says, wonderful, you're in the right place now where I can use you. Hallelujah. You know, Moses was a great man, a great man. He was a prince in Egypt. He could have ended up being maybe a future pharaoh. Who knows? And he had a desire within him. And he, and he, and he rose up in the, his 40th year. And, he, and he, he thought, right, I'll go and I'll, I'll help my people. They'll recognize me. And of course, they didn't recognize him. Then he had to run into the wilderness for 40 years. And what happened to him in the wilderness? He was broken. He was a broken man. And then when God appears to him, Moses now is like, Lord, Lord, Lord just leave me alone, Lord. I'm just... I'm just a wee shepherd stuck out here. And the Lord says, now, Moses, you're in the right place now for me to use you. Hallelujah. 
God uses the weak things, the despised things, the things that seem to be not in this world for his glory. Do you know why? Because they're never going to be glorying about themselves. Amen? They're, 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 just, they're in a place now where God can use them. Glory to God. I want to tell you this. The church needs to be broken and include ourselves here as well and myself to bring us to the place where God can use us in these latter days. The church has got too big for its boots. The church is swinging for its golden chandeliers and money to just declare itself to be this, this, and the next thing. The church needs to gain, bring itself right back again to find itself in the place of brokenness. And then God can use that church and that brokenness and says, now I will use my church again in these latter days. Oh, how we need to see the church rising up today, brethren. We are living in the most un terrible times. And I want to tell you this, God is looking for a people, a people who will come before him, a people who will bow before him and say, Lord, here I am. Hallelujah. I humble myself under your mighty hand. And when you do that, God says, now I can pick him up. When we are prepared to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, God will do a mighty work in us. I want to encourage all of us today. If you've never ever made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll tell you right now, you better make that decision because the times are coming to an end. The times are coming. The clock is ticking now. It's ticking. It's ticking. I could say the sands of time are running out. Amen. Hallelujah. The clock is ticking. The time is now pushing towards the time of his return. And I want to be, I don't know about you, I want to be found in that place. I want to be found in the right place. Hallelujah. I want to be in the place that God wants me to be for his glory, for his praise and honor because he's coming back to receive us. Guys, it's time to run the race. Can I go back just to where I started there? It's time for us now to run that race of perseverance. Throw everything off that will hinder you. Throw everything off that actually will pull you back and will stop you running quickly. Let's go into training and let's say, right, Lord, I'm running for you. Glory to God. The things of this world no longer will master me. I will master them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let's get up and let's start running. Let's get into serious training. For God is setting apart a group of people. I don't know about you. Would you not want to have been in the 300? Remember that film? The 300. Would you not want to be been one of the ones that was in, the, in that 300? And you were still, you were, God had picked you. Handpicked by God. I'm part of that 300. I don't know about you guys, but I think I want to be in the part of that 300. Because we know what happened. God used them powerfully and they overcame the enemy. And God used them for a mighty battle. 300. If God is with us. Who can be against us? Hallelujah. Guys, God is picking, hand picking people today. You can either take this with a pinch of salt or you can take it one thing or another. If you knew that God was looking at you just now and he's looking right, I'm looking for somebody that I can use. What was it he says? D.L. Moody. I always, I always quote D.L. Moody. A man says to D.L. Moody, he was, sitting in, he was sitting having a coffee with somebody or, or a situation and some man said this, God is, the world's yet to see what God can do with a man fully surrendered unto him. And D.L. Moody was sitting there. Now, D.L. Moody was a, what, in a, in a, a very low-key job. Is that right? A shoe? It was a shoe salesman. There was nothing glamorous about D.L. Moody. But do you know what D.L. Moody says? I'm going to be that man. And do you know what? He went into training in the secret place. And you can pick up a book and you can read about the great man D.L. Moody and how God used that man powerfully for his glory. And it all started because he was confronted with a situation. D.L. Moody says, I am going to be that man. Amen. God is no respect to the people. The devil will come and shout at you and shout at you. You're just a hopeless case. You're no good. You're this, you're that. The next thing, you need to say, get behind me, Satan, because God has put his hand upon me. You're right. I'm no good. I was rubbish. I was a liar, a scheming, a cheater. I was this. That was the next thing. But I'm sure we could all write a big me mega list up and say, oh, he's right. He's read my, he must have read my case book. He must have been in court. He must have had access to my records. Ah, you're this, you're this, and that. And just say, yeah, that's right. But here, but God still chose me. So Satan, get behind me. Hallelujah. I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. You're right, see all that track record. I can't deny it. Guilty as charged. But you know, Sam, see that blood that we, as we came to the table this morning, he has cleansed me from all that rubbish and all that filth. He's taken it from me. I am now a different person. The person you were pointing to, he's no longer, he's no longer alive. He's dead. 
I'm a new man in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, and I'm running a new race. I ain't running that old track. I'm running on the narrow road now for the glory of God, amen. And it also, all it takes is you saying, Lord, here I am, use me. The thing is, are you willing to say that? And I mean to say it from the heart. I mean to say like this, I'm sick of living that life. I'm going to live the new life in Christ Jesus, amen, and be the man, be the woman that God has called me to be. And God says, okay, part of the 300, amen. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that your word is true. I thank you, Lord, that you use the weak, the vulnerable, Lord God, the pitiful, Lord God, the things that seem not, Father, to shame the things that, Lord God, would glorify themselves. I thank you, Father, for your hand upon each and every single one of us today. And Lord, if you haven't put your hand in anyone in this room today, Father, I pray, Lord God, that you will reveal yourself to them. I pray that you will minister to them and speak to them, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Now listen, if that's you, if you've never made a decision to the Lord this day, then just put your hand up and I will pray for you at the end. I won't embarrass you in front of anyone. If there's anybody in here that you've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ and you've been sitting there, you've been wrestling with this, but you've never actually done it, then just put your hand up and I will pray for you at the end of this service. Amen. Amen. I love it when I'm standing in the streets of Paisley on Wednesday. By the way, we're out on Wednesday again. I tell that story. I tell that story. Glory to God. How I used to stagger through the streets of Paisley, but then one day I had an encounter with Jesus and it changed me. Now look at me. I'm out in the streets of Paisley, standing with a mic, sharing the gospel. Glory to God. Father, bless your people today. I want you to encourage them and bless them, Father. I want you to make known to them your plans and your purposes for their life. I pray, Lord God, that you will, Lord God, Father, Lord, have an encounter with them. Even as you had an encounter with Gideon, I pray you will have an encounter with your people today, Father, in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Thanks for watching. If you've been challenged today, then please drop a message so that we can help support and pray for you. And also, remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next message.